glad you could join us today on EDFA. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. The marine environment is already registering the impact of climate change. The current increase in global temperature of 0.7 degrees Celsius since pre-industrial times is disrupting life in the oceans from the tropics to the poles. Climate changing pollution escapes from ships as they burn some of the most polluting types of fuel available. Today on Earth Fire, it's all about the maritime sector, how shipping is contributing to global warming and its impact on fishing. Do stay with us. The part played by the shipping industry in reducing global greenhouse emissions is under the spotlight. The International Maritime Organization, the United Nations Agency concerned with the safety of shipping and cleaner oceans, is under increased scrutiny for their efforts to lower emissions and increase efficiency. Maritime transport emits around 1,000 million tons of carbon dioxide annually and is responsible for about 2.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, according to the third International Maritime Organization Greenhouse Gas Study. If left unchecked, shipping emissions are predicted to increase between 50% and 250% by 2050, endangering the internationally agreed goal of keeping global temperature increase to below 2 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. Air pollution remains the single biggest challenge in the shipping industry. The International Chamber of Shipping reports the 50,000 merchant ships operating around the globe touch 90% of the global trade. Maritime sector is at the heart of global trade. Economic activity is a fulcrum that the quality of living rests on. There's no nation that will have everything that it needs, and so we must trade. And it is in trading that we create wealth. It is in trading that we make goods and services available to areas, from areas where they are produced to areas where they are needed. And it's been proven that 90% of trade or global commerce is done through seaborne trade. And so anything that affects seaborne trade affects the, the economy of the globe. And like I said earlier, Everything that has consequences on the environment or impact on the environment also impacts the economy. And they are interlinked, they are interwoven. Nations around the world identified as least developed countries often found across Africa and Asia Pacific, as well as small island developing states, are seen as crucial players in the fight against worsening climate change. Often communities from these regions, particularly shore-based settlements, are the first to suffer the consequences of global warming, which threatens their livelihoods. Now, climate change affects all the activities that we know the maritime sector does, like the port harbors, navigation on sea, bringing in uh, cargoes, even passengers, everything that has to do with shipping climate change affects it. When greenhouse gases are emitted and temperature rises, the sea surge, like we witnessed along the Lake Ekwe axis, it affects the waters. And when this water, uh, the sea surges, it affects the ports. Now, business activities might be disrupted if the sea ports are not actually raised to the level that can really, really combat the effect of the sea surges. Aside that, the aqua life, the aquatic life under the ocean is affected because greenhouse gases affect all the coral reefs, everything, the fishes, the little, little mollusks and all of them, they are affected. That's why we spoke about the need for the maritime sector to really, really do something about greenhouse gas emissions. They should start finding a way to devise a framework to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases from all the activities. If it means making the ship owners pay, if it means making them to use new technology, if it means making them to check their fuel efficiency. The shipping sector was taken by storm recently when the revised emission trading scheme was approved in the European Parliament. The new emission trading scheme proposes that the shipping industry should be included in the scheme from 2023. 
unless the International Maritime Organization introduces a similar system by 2021. Now the world's biggest carbon market, the emission trading scheme, was first launched in 2005 as a way to restrict the volume of greenhouse gases emitted by energy intensive industries, power producers and airlines. Companies receive, buy or trade pollution permits, officially known as emission allowances, in accordance with predetermined carbon dioxide limits. One European Union allowance allows for one ton of carbon dioxide to be emitted. Faced with the task of reducing a surplus of more than 3 billion allowances in 2015, the European Commission set out to reform the current emission trading scheme. Part and parcel of this reform is the proposal that starting from 2023, carbon dioxide emissions from shipping should be accounted for through the emission trading scheme. Today, shipping is the only industry not included in the 2015 Paris Agreement due to its global nature and the difficulty in allocating emissions from a ship to a single state. 